time, key phrase, we all have a limited supply. My father had 90 years, but it seemed, 93 years, but it seemed short. In his seemingly long life of 93 years, it was short because it, it just seems like if we only had more time. Old Testament gives us a view of some people who lived to be five, six, seven, eight, nine hundred years old. Wouldn't that be a good question if you had a chance to ask? Imagine seven, eight, nine hundred years to watch generation after generation after generation after generation stay healthy and well. I mean, you gotta have, you gotta be healthy to make it to 900. I'm pushing the Bible, I'm pushing vitamins. I mean, I'm doing good today. The key is time is precious. Life is not just the passing of time. Life is not just the passing of time. Life is a collection of experiences, their frequency and their intensity. Life is not just watching the clock tick away. Life is a collection of experiences, their intensity, their frequency. When my friend Mark died at age 44, someone says, that's young to die. But what if he lived four lifetimes in one? It might not be too young. So here's what it, whatever the span of your life turns out to be, here's what you want to fill it up with, experiences and the intensity of those experiences. But now let's talk about the management of time. Here's one of the best ones we covered earlier. When should you start building this hotel? Answer as soon as you have it finished. Now jot this one down on time management. When should you start the day? As soon as you have it finished. Plan the day the best you can, leaving plenty of room for improvising and surprises and all the stuff that happens during the course of the day. But if you've planned a good productive day, now you start that day, you can't believe how much more valuable your time will be. Don't start the day until you have it finished. Now here's the next one. Don't start the week until you've had it finished. Now to lay out a week is a pretty good challenge. Next, don't start the month until you have it finished. The places to go and the people to see and the productivity and the sales and the customers and the development and all the rest of what you want to accomplish during the course of 30 days. Don't start the month until it's finished. And then here's the big one. This is really challenging. Don't start the year until you have it finished. To the best of your ability, it can't be finished like minute by minute. But in terms of the sweep of what you want to accomplish in the year 2002, make sure that that's set and ready to go by the time January 1st rolls around. And it might get all upset. It might get torn up and you do a new one. You make so much progress the first 90 days that now you've got, you've multiplied it all by two by three. Because that happened to me. I thought, wow, here's how, this is gonna be a great year. By the time I'd finished the third month, I'm rolling, I'm soaring. So many things are happening. I revised my whole year's plan. Okay. Now, jot this down. Approaches to the management of time. Here's the first one. Ignore the subject. I mean, that's good advice. Don't let anything overly bug you. Because remember now, you don't have to do anything. Someone says, well, I got to get a handle on my time. The answer is no, you don't. If you want to let it all go, you can let it all go. I mean, this is good advice. Somebody says, you ought, you ought, you ought. Jot this down, ignore all the you oughts, or you should, only if they're giving general information, we should. It's better to say if you're teaching, we should, not you should, we should. Then you let me listen in without it being too confrontational. If everyone did this, see, that'd be great. And then you give a person a chance to choose to do it or not to do it. But when you start the you ought, you ought, now see if I don't, now, see, we got some tension and maybe some problems. So you ought seem to always create problems. When you're talking to your kids, you say, no, if kids would do this, not always saying if you did this, if you did this, life would be better. But if kids did this, life would be better. It's like making a little talk and letting them listen in. And then it's a little less confrontation. It gives us a choice. 
In one of my seminars, here's what I teach. All life forms strive to the max of its potential except human beings. All life forms strive to the max of its potential except human beings. How tall will a tree grow? as tall as it possibly can. You never heard of a tree growing half as high as it could. No, trees don't grow half. A tree drives its roots as deep as it can, reaches as high as it can, produces every leaf it can, every fruit it possibly can. To the max, every life form strives to the max, except human beings. Now, why not human beings? Jot this down. You've been given the dignity of choice. You're not a robot. You don't have to repeat this year the same as last year. You can tear up last year's plan, develop a new plan. So the dignity of being a human being. Now here's the choice on being a human being, to be part of all we were meant to be, or to be all, to strive for all, or half, or part, or some. The choice is up to you to develop one skill or 10 skills. Someone says, well, I'd be happy with just one more language. Well, some say, hey, I'm gonna learn six or seven. And this is all a matter of choice. And when someone says, no, you ought to learn four, you got to resist all that. Because this is personal dignity. And you don't want to destroy someone's dignity by, by doing all the oughts and they feel reluctant to do it. Now we've got problems. So if you want to just ignore this subject on time management, now here's the next one. Step down to something easier. The guy's in sales and he says, oh, I want to own the company. Finally owns the company. Now he's got no time to play golf. He said, when I was in sales, I was making big money playing golf three days a week. Heck with this owning something. Heck with managing. My life was never my own after I started to manage. I'm going back to sales. See, this is the key. If you're getting too pressed, you might consider stepping down to something with a little easier time pressure. Little girl says to her mother, Daddy comes home, brings his briefcase and pats me on the head and says hello, and disappears and works on his papers. How come my daddy doesn't play with me? And her mother said, look, your daddy loves you very much, but he has he's so busy at work, he can't get it all done, he has to bring it home. He loves you, but that's why he can't play with you. And the little girl said, why don't they just put him in a slower group? <laughs> so, jot this down now. If you don't have time for your kids, you might consider joining a slower group. Remember when I said some things I went for cost me too much? So reconsider. Next key to time management and that's work longer and harder. But see, there's a limit to that. I almost lost my health the first year. I went so crazy about personal development and achievement. I just went bonkers. You know, I told you I was skinny, but at the end of that first year, I was a walking shadow. And then it suddenly occurred to me, what if I got rich and too ill to spend it? I mean, that was a shocker. So I started, you know, developing a little more reasonable because I said, if 12 hours won't do it, I'll work 14. If that won't do it, I'll work 18. I mean, how many hours it takes. And sure enough, it, it cost me too much. So see, working longer and harder for some might be appropriate. You know, if you're just sitting around not doing that much, this might be good, work longer and harder. But you can only work so hard. Here's the key, not to work harder, but smarter. When you've worked as hard as you can, doing the best you can in terms of physical output in the time, reasonable time, now here's the ultimate in the management of time, and that is you simply become more skillful. When I first got into sales, you know, I was around people that could get, you know, nine out of 10, eight out of 10. And when I first started, I could only get one out of 10. But here's what I did. I worked around the clock, around the clock, so that I would make up in numbers what I lacked in skill. That's good in sales. You got to jot that down. When you're new, you make up in numbers what you lack in skill. Now, when you become more skillful, the numbers can go down because now your, your persuasive ability and all of that is now so high that you don't need to put as many numbers out. But at first, if you want to compete or if you want to really get good, you've got to put in the numbers.
But if you get more from yourself, develop more of yourself, now the time management becomes an easier task. Now here's the next thing. Either you run the project or it runs you. I've found out when you start something, at first you're in charge. All of a sudden, a year later, it's in charge. Some of the companies I started, I'm telling you, I'm in control. A couple of years later, I'm out of control. At first, I've got it on the run. Two years later, it's got me on the run. Haven't got enough time. I'm dizzy with trying to get it all done. So here's part of the key, and that's to get in charge. Say, I'm going to take charge of my health. One of my albums is entitled, Take Charge of Your Life. Take charge of your time. Take charge of your resources, which we're going to talk about next. Take charge of your health. You're the one that's responsible for it. It's not a requirement of society that you not have a heart attack and take care of your family. That's not a requirement of society, but you must make it a requirement of yourself. Society doesn't require that you build a financial wall around your family. Nothing can get through. That's not a requirement of society. It's a requirement you impose on yourself to build a financial wall around your family. Nothing can get through. So impose on yourself the self-development of being in charge, taking charge of your life and your health and your future and your responsibilities and all of this. Next. Reasonable time is enough time to achieve all of your goals. Just jot that down. Reasonable time is enough time. I had to learn that. Reasonable time is enough time. Here's why. It's not the hours you put in, it's what you put in the hours. If you start depositing greater ideas into the hours you've got later than now, I'm telling you later, you can't believe the productivity that will flow. The ideas you can't think of now, a year from now, they'll start to flow. And when you deposit those ideas in the hours you've got, productivity multiplies by two, three, five, two. Next, time management essential. We've already covered the first one, a written set of goals. And then do priorities on your goals. What's important this week? What's important this month? Here's the next one. Often review. Just go over your goals to make sure that your list is working for you. It's got you inspired. It's got you turned on. Somebody says, how come you're up so early? Say, if you were headed where I'm headed, you'd be up early too. If you were going to meet who I'm going to meet, you'd be up early. If it was going to stack up for you like it's stacking up for me, you'd be getting up.